Hey. You there? How you doing? How's it going? Oh, doing well. That was great. Oh, thanks. I actually found so much of what you said interesting and something I want to talk about. I'm uh, glad it was interesting. So, <laughs> uh, so, okay, let's just get into it. Because okay. you mentioned uh, something in the sermon that I thought was really, really important, which was uh, that as human beings, we all have this need to mm. connect to the transcendent mm-hmm. in some way. Yeah. And uh, I'd love you to unpack that a little bit more. Like what you mean by that? Like that there's just, is there something inside all of us? Are we all striving, trying to figure out? Is, are we just made in a way that we need divine connection? What, 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 what do you mean by that? And why don't we go a little, a little deeper on that? Yeah, yeah. I think for me, how that, how that plays out, um, I think we, we see God, obviously he's multifaceted in his attributes and we all tend to gravitate to certain aspects of who he is. And I know even for you, I've learned a lot from like the idea of his sovereignty and his justice. Mm. I know those ring home for you. And for me, it's, it's really the idea of him as a shepherd um, is one that I look to a lot. Um, and I think that probably comes out of a life of like, especially when I was younger, I had a ton of anxiety and uh, the ditch I tend to even still fall into um, is probably just worrying too much. Mm. And, and so this idea of a shepherd, of Jesus as a shepherd, uh, and all the attributes in proximity to that of just care, goodness, guidance, really ring true to me. And I think how I connect with God, how I connect, um, yeah, with him is obviously little things like Lecto 365 is a great app to just like slow down and meditate and invite him into your day. But if I do have time, I try, try and do something a little, maybe a little mystical. I, um, <laughs> I connect with Psalms 23, the idea of the shepherd. Psalms 23 is um, a chapter that is really helpful for me. And when I connect with Jesus and actually taking time to actually stop to meditate and even even imagine that image of like walking by still waters, laying us down in pastures, um, like restoring our soul. I, I almost visualize that. I make space to like actually make space to connect with God in that location. And I know that sounds hmm. kind of mystical, <laughs> but great. having that nostalgic, like always going back to that similar space and not, not even considering those things as metaphorical only, but like actually making space for him to do those things. So to restore my soul too, uh, is really important for me. And so that, that's a, a key way I connect with the transcendent, connect with God, um, is making space for him to kind of meet me in that place. And that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the day for me. So last week we talked about the Bible and it's interesting because in the Bible, we have all these different genres. Right. Do you think that God put art in the Bible for this reason? Yeah, I think the- Because when we, when we engage with art, there's something different that happens to us, right? Like we connect in a different way to something beyond ourselves. I, totally. I, think, so I think maybe it's an overswing of the enlightenment or whatever that were rational things. Like we, we have to think of the book technically, but I think an underplayed part of interpretation is imagination. And I know that can be, we get us into some weird spaces, but I think if it's in proper hermeneutics, we need to allow our, our minds to imagine like life with Jesus and invite him into that. I think that's a part of engaging with poetry, art. Like there's, there's huge pieces of literature that are prominent in scripture that invite you to imagine what it means to be like with God. Right. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Um, and I would agree with you. I think, you know, it, it sounds like what you're saying and I, and I would definitely agree is that you're not going to feel a connection to the transcendent if you're not intentional about right. it. You're going to have to be intentional about these things. Yeah. Uh, you can't just live your normal life and then expect to feel connected to the divine totally. in some transcendent way. You have to actually lean in. push in and lean into yeah. it, right? So then I want to look at the flip side of that, which is that as you presented this Christian view of anthropology, this Christian view of who human beings really are, something that I think stands out really uniquely in what you presented was that there's an intentionality behind the Christian story of this, that we're not random, we're not purposeless, but that in the Christian story, God intentionally makes us for a reason and God intentionally works to redeem us and adopt us and attach us to himself for eternity. There's so much intentionality around us as, as human beings. So can you speak more about that and how that 
maybe is like a unique idea yeah. that's really something that's compelling for, for people. Yeah, when I think, yeah, when I think the idea of purpose, when you're made on purpose, that means you're made with a purpose. And that idea of intentionality and redemption, I think really tie well together. Because you think about secular anthropology, like the idea of purpose, they would argue that there is, you don't have a purpose, like a lot of those worldviews, but, but everyone, everyone, doesn't matter how secular you are, how like cut away from you are from the transcendent, everyone finds purpose in something. And I think what else is on offer is quite one dimensional and quite exclusive too. Like, you, you think about the things on offer, whether it be to go there a- after affluence and wealth and to avoid suffering and pain, to go after pleasure through sex relationships, status, to go through, go after like, uh, to avoid ignorance, you know, because that's what harms society by being aware, having knowledge. Like these are things that people find purpose in. But I think they're one dimensional in the fact that they tend to be hyper emphasized on one aspect of what it means to be truly human. Mm-hmm. And, and they're very exclusive that, you know, not everyone has access to these lanes of what culture defines as purposeful or success. And the redemptive story um, is extremely inclusive because the gospel is inclusive. And be it by being invited into a new identity with Christ gives you a pur- purpose and that is available to everyone. And, mm-hmm. and so the, the single mom who can't necessarily have career aspirations and struggling to keep the family unit going can feel in this redemptive story that she can have purpose in exactly what she's doing. And it's so inclusive by her building the kingdom in her unique way. And Jesus invites her into that. So, so the beauty of the Christian story is it invites, invites everyone into the sense of finding purpose in Christ, being a people that are for his kingdom. Yeah, there's something too when you get you know, a little gift or something in your life. And then you find out after the person really tried to think through what to get you and you go, oh, well, that's interesting. Like that, that makes me feel loved and thought about and appreciated. And that's like the beauty of the Christian angle on this, right? Is like, we're all searching for this kind of love and acceptance and all these things. And then to know actually the person, the being behind all this cares right. about you is a big deal. Yeah. And, and really kind of the magic of the Christian view of, of, of who people are, I think. And, yeah. and, I think you, uh, and I think you spoke to that really well. Now, you also had this really interesting um, bit about how we, we, we're, we're kind of like God and God's image. We're kind of like creatures, right. like animals, but really we live in the middle. Um, talk a little bit about that tension and how we can avoid the cycles of disappointment and then feeling yeah. like God and then not and feeling worthless and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, yeah. I think for me, it'd be maybe a simple answer of like, I think the gospel continually draws us into the middle. Cause it's like, I think for myself, it's like just on a micro level, it can be uh, me leaving the house. Like things didn't go well in the home front of like, we're hurried, we're scattered. I s- said some things, I got angry at the kids and I'm leaving upset. Um, and that, that moment I, I'm anticipating my family should serve me. Like I'm disappointed that I expected something from my family to all come in line and do what I'm asking and to really serve my needs. And that's pushing me outside that lane of like, to be like God, my family's designed and here to serve my uh, needs and whatever I have. And that's always disappointed with, well, that's harming my relationship with my family. when I try and get in that lane of they're here to serve my needs. And so you're like, you're saying that disappointment of you kind of crash back into the impulse is to kind of move more into that, what we describe that beast category, that right. kind of creature category. Cause then you fall into like regret and like you're driving on the way home uh, or you're driving to work and you're thinking about what just happened. And you have feelings of shame, which move to regret, which moves to um, disconnect, withdraw from maybe people when at work, um, you're distancing yourself from relationships that are meaningful. Like you're, you're not being human. You're moving to this kind of these the beast way of operating. Um, and I think what helps nip that in the bud before those things start compounding, I find myself completely withdrawn from my team or my family when I get home, is like small things, like before I get into the office, just preaching the gospel to myself and allow, like actually to myself, like what Jesus has done, potentially even repenting for things, 
just, and that frames a different way of, of being. And, it, and to even go more mystical, some, sometimes I'll literally do a practice in my car of what they call palms down, palms up. I don't know if you've heard mm-hmm. of this. It's like palms down, it's almost like a physical act of what, what you're doing in prayer of palms down, just recognizing your shortcomings, your sin, just like your conditions, your stress, the, like the circumstances that are happening in your life. And then the palms up, there's this action of then giving those things mm. to Jesus and just kind of like speaking truth to yourself, you know, talking about the promises of God. And what that does is, and as I enter into the office, I'm a little more light-footed, I'm a little more um, joyful, I'm a little more uh, have perspective of the stresses in my life, a little more perspective of who God is in my life. I'm just positioned quite differently than in, a, in avoiding a kind of bit of a spiral of this could go into a compounding effect of just feeling withdrawn, all rooted in that one act of trying to be like God, not feeling ashamed and moving to the kind of place of the creature, the beast, like we talked about on Sunday. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's super helpful. And thanks for doing yeah. this. Thanks for taking a few extra minutes yeah, uh, to chat about this a little bit deeper. And just a reminder, we have hours and hours of content on even this particular topic on workshop.online, mm-hmm. plus resources and cohort classes you can do to to investigate this all deeper. It's a great place to go if you want to learn more and you want to explore more. Uh, And hey, if you enjoy what we're doing here at Village Church, if you value these kinds of resources and this kind of way that we're trying to do ministry, you can always financially support us at thisisvillagechurch.com. Okay, we'll see you next week. 